Good morning, Milken Church family. Welcome back. And if this is your first time, we welcome you. Now, we are in a season of change these days with many, many ways we are going through that right now. We would like to ask each one of you be graceful with us as we are going through all these changes. Now, the first change, if you're here physically in our building, and if you're sitting one of the rows that actually have a red X stick to the side of it, we'd like to ask you to move to a row that doesn't have that. And make sure while you move there, keep your distance. And if you're here without doing RSVP, we do ask that, well, since the, um, the province is opening up more and more, there might be more people coming and we may have to limit the number of people in the building for safety reason. Now for that, please make sure you do call ahead before Saturday at noon at our church phone number and leave your name and phone number and the names of anyone who's coming with you just so that we know who's coming. Now, if we don't have enough room and you didn't RSVP, we just may have to ask you to go home and get online to millicanchurch.org slash live to watch us online right now. And if you are watching this online, welcome too. Now, before the worship team come and lead us in worship, uh, there are a few things in addition to what I already said I would like to draw your attention to. Now, um, there is a family among us that is in need, a very urgent need of an apartment. There's a three bedroom or better yet four bedroom apartment or house. If you have a contact or you know someone who have that available, please call the church number, leave a message for Marlene and she will then connect you to that family. Please remember your brothers and sisters in need. And please, if you have not yet subscribed to our uh, e-news that we send out every Sunday morning, please go to our website, millicanchurch.org, right on the homepage. You will be able to subscribe. And now, in a few minutes, our worship leader is going to come forward and lead us. And now, please, let us pray. Dear Father, I want to thank you for uh, all of us who is here right now, no matter is online or in person right here in the church building. I ask that for the next 45 minutes to an hour or so that you will be with us. Bless us with your wisdom, with your love, as we worship you and give thanks to you. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'll see you at the end of the service. For he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. To him alone does great wonders. His love endures forever. Who by understanding made the heavens. His love endures forever. Who spread out the earth upon the waters. His love endures forever who made the great lights, his love endures forever. The sun to govern the day, his love endures forever. The moon and the stars to govern the night, his love endures forever. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his love endures forever. And brought Israel out from among them, his love endures forever. With a mighty hand and outstretched arm, his love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea asunder, his love endures forever. His, um, to him and brought Israel through the midst of it, his love endures forever. But swept Pharaoh and his might, 
and his army into the Red Sea, his love endures forever. To him who led his people through the wilderness, his love endures forever. To him who struck down great kings, his love endures forever. And killed mighty kings, his love endures forever. Shion, king of the Amorites, his love endures forever. And Og, king of Bashan, his love endures forever. He gave their land as an inheritance, his love endures forever. An inheritance to his servant Israel, his love endures forever. He remembered us in our low estate, his love endures forever. And freed us from our enemies, his love endures forever. He gives food to every creature, his love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 136 Re, uh, remembers all that God has done for the Israelites and in their worship. And I think our story will, can be added to that. To him who brought us through the COVID pandemic. We are now in stage three in Toronto, where prog uh, there's progress in, in the situation. And to him who has brought us through the COVID pandemic, his love endures forever. And there's so many things that we are thankful for today. And uh, stand with me as we sing 10,000 Reasons. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I worship Your holy name. The sun comes up. It's a new day dawning. It's time to sing your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, let me be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Oh, my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I worship Your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness, I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh, my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Oh, my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I worship your holy name. I worship your holy name. Yes, I worship your holy name. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Sorry, I'm going to have to take this down. It's hard to talk while I have the mask on. This morning's um, reading is taken from Ecclesiastes 
chapter 3, verses 1 to 11, and verse 14. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal. Yes, time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather them, a time to embrace and a time to refrain, a time to search and a time to give up, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. What does the worker gain from his toil? I have seen the burden God has laid upon men. He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men, yet they cannot fathom what God has done from beginning to end. Verse 14, I know that everything God does will endure forever. Nothing can be added to it, and nothing can be taken from it. God does it so that men will revere him. Here ends the reading. We are grateful to the Lord that he has given us an opportunity to um, come into his house and to glorify him. And as we take this time to reflect on our week, reflect on um, all that's going on in our world, we know that, that our world needs the Lord. And so we need to take the time, this moment, to pray for the needs of this world, for the needs of ourselves, and the needs of others. But um, let's remember um, particularly our, our cities and our, um, our, our country as we are transitioning into different phases and that, um, that everything will be planned well and that the governing uh, people who are in charge of these things will um, make sound decisions and so um, that they can ensure the safety of the people around. And so um, let's enter into a time of prayer as we pray for these things. Let's pray. Almighty God, we just want to thank you for your goodness to us. Oftentimes when we reflect on our lives, we see that it's only by your mighty hand that we are able to move forward and to do anything. And we are so grateful, Father God, that you are watching over us and that you take care of our every need. Lord God, I thank you for each person that is represented here and has come to listen to your word today. Lord, I just pray that you will open each ear and open each heart as they surrender to your will and surrender to what you have to say. May we be ready, be ready to receive it. Father God, we thank you for those who are in charge over our cities, over our districts, over our country. Father God, I just pray in the mighty name of Jesus that you will give them wisdom that only comes from you, that you will direct their path and that you will give them guidance as how they are to lead and how we can find safety even in the midst of turmoil. God, I just pray that your almighty hand will stretch out and give them direction. But more importantly, Lord, I just pray that, that you will see 
us and that you will have mercy on us, dear Father God. I pray that you will help us to look to you and look to you who gives us strength and gives us the ability to move from day to day. Father God, we are grateful for those who um, are part of our church that are unable to be here today, Father God. Lord, I thank you for each individual person and I just pray that you will meet with them as they worship at their own individual homes or other places of worship. I just pray that you will just be with them and that your Holy Spirit will be ever present with them. Be with those who are sick and are shut in and I pray that you will just continue to uphold them with strength. Give them a healing touch. Be with them in their loneliness. Be with them in their times alone, dear Father God. Give them the desire to just search wholeheartedly after you. And Father God, I just pray that you will be with your servant today, that you will bless me as I bring forth your word today. Give me the words that can only come from you and that your people will be able to hear your truth. Lord, we thank you for all that you're going to do. And I pray that you will continue to guide us. You've taught us the words to say. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our New Testament reading this morning is taken from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 15. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 to 15. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire. And the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, <clears throat> blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. Here ends the reading. Well, good morning again. It's such a privilege to be able to come and bring the word this morning. Um, I must say that timing is a really peculiar thing because I uh, never would have expected that this, would, uh, this day would come. Uh, it's kind of surreal for me because um, 
this church uh, has so much significance for me. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Pastor Aza Butcher. Um, I've been living in the GTA all of my life, but um, this church, though it had not been my own for so long, had played such um, a major role in my development. Just to give you a quick rundown, um, I remember actually being in this spot right here, um, kind of being surrounded by a, uh, a group of children and the pastor as I recited the 66 books of the Bible. And it's kind of surreal to me thinking back that that was 33 years ago. <laughs> 33 years ago, I was standing right there and I was reciting it. Not too long after, I got connected with the church and I had um, Deanne as one of my count, uh, camp counselors um, at Silver Lake Camp. Um, Stephen Southwell was here helping me, um, leading the first um, zone rally, youth zone rally um, for, for church. Um, and helped um, the team, the Millican youth team and I, to, uh, um, s to worship with a, a whole host of young people. And today I come here before you as a minister of the gospel. And uh, I'm just really grateful for how God has um, ordered my steps to come back here and to be able to share the word with you. Um, before we enter into it, Let's uh, offer a quick word of prayer. Lord, I thank you again for this opportunity to preach your word. I pray that you will speak through me. Let every word that comes out of my mouth be directed from you. And may your people be blessed to hear your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, last week, I was very grateful for how the Lord spoke through Pastor Simone. Her message was very compelling to me as she took us through Jeremiah, imploring us to turn back to Jesus, repent of our sin, and live as one worthy of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe her message was very timely, and it was something that had been on my heart for some time, um, for actually for a number of years, concerning those of us who identify with Christ. We are living in a time where being anything but a Christian is right. It doesn't matter what you believe, just as long as you believe something. There are so many ways to be enlightened. People are thirsting for knowledge and understanding, but if you mention having a hunger and thirst for righteousness, that's too complicated. All that matters is that you are letting your light shine and that you're living your truth. Yes, you heard me correctly. Truth is now being defined by whatever you believe is right. You are the one who determines what is true for you and what is not. This behavior is not new. Peter had to deal with very similar attitudes. He was very aware of what was happening within the society of his day and was very concerned at how the false doctrines of his day would have an effect on the church. So he writes them a letter. 2 Peter 3 verses 1 to 18 outlines how Peter wanted to ensure that the church would be aware of the surroundings so that they would not be entrapped by the snares of those who would damage their faith. If you have your Bible app, I invite you to turn to this passage and follow along as I read. 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 1 to 18. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets, and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last day, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming he's promised? Even since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, 
By God's word, the heavens came into being, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters, also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire, and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation just as our dear brother Paul also wrote to you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them as these matter, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand with ignorant and unstable people dis distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawlessness, lawless, by the error of the lawless, and fall from your secure position. But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. As I was thinking of a topic for um, my sermon, um, I kept falling on um, understanding perfect timing. And as I was reading the scripture, I was just trying to figure out, I was just like, what in the world does this have to do with perfect timing? How are the elements in this passage about perfect timing? Well, while reading this passage, there are a few key elements that Peter gives the early church that are relevant to us today. There has been a lot of change and a lot of pandemonium going on. And instead of turning a blind eye to the events around us, I believe that this particular time in our lives, we have been given a perfect time to prepare for what's to come. And so, I've outlined perfect timing in three different aspects. My first point is perfect time. Now is the perfect time to guard ourselves with grace and knowledge. Verses 17 and 18 tell us to guard our hearts and to guard ourselves so that we will not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from our secure position, but to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Part of why so many people are influenced and fall victim to these false teachings is because they don't know what they believe. When someone presents an argument that challenges their faith, they seem to crumble under the pressure. One of my favorite radio shows is um, on WDCX, and it's entitled Defending the Truth with the Bob Duco. And he has a segment in his uh, radio show where he, he calls 
um, where callers phone in and basically give a defense for what they believe. And in turn, what he does is he role plays as an unbeliever and basically gives them um, every opportunity to defend their faith, but in turn he is also going to defend what he believes as if he were an unbeliever. And they role play for two minutes. Should the caller get flustered, he reassures them that he is not doing this to be difficult or mean, but treating their defense as someone who would legitimately react in this manner. He explains that he does this to encourage believers to dig deeper into the Word of God so that their defense is rooted firmly in biblical truth. We have been given a most powerful tool to defend our faith, which is the Bible, the Word of God. Ephesians 6 verses 11 and 12 reminds us that we are to put on the full armor of God so that we are able to have a defense when Satan plots against us. Because our fight is much deeper than starting an argument with those who disagree with us, it's all, because our fight is much deeper than starting an argument with those who disagree with us, it's about the governments and institutions and powers and the high officials that are trying to force us to believe contrary to what we know is true. And the Bible tells us that we are to put on the full armor of God so that we have an awareness of what's going on. Joshua 1.8 tells us to keep the laws of this book on our lips and to meditate on God's word day and night so that we are careful to keep what is commanded of us and that we will be prosperous and successful. Therefore, we are to make every effort to do so so that we may be fully equipped for battle. I remember when I was a child that my mom would take time to go through uh, the commentary on Saturday mornings. And I used to think that it was absolutely ridiculous because like, what are we doing? Like, I'm eight years old. I'm like, why are we going through a biblical commentary at my age? I don't understand anything that's going on. But what we would do is that we would meet every Saturday morning and she would first lead me through um, the scripture and then she would explain to me what that scripture meant. And at the time, I didn't really appreciate it, but now I'm finding that it's so incredibly important to be able to defend what I believe. I've had so many friends over the past few years who have made a declaration with Christ, but through difficult times and through difficult circumstances have decided that there are other ways to be able to figure out how to get to God. And, I'm, and it blows my mind because I was just like, you've been given truth. How is it that you could be so quick to turn your back on what the Bible has told us is true? But that gives us all the more reason why the scriptures need to be rooted into our hearts, that we need to be meditating on them day and night, and that we need to be spending time bringing them internally so that when the devil tries to come and steal that truth from us, we'll be like, oh, absolutely not. No, this is what the word of God says. We're going to follow this, and this is what God says is true. And so I say that we need to be diligent in growing in knowledge and finding the time to be able to know what is true from what is not. And that only will come from spending time in the word of God. Secondly, I find that it's a perfect time for us to actively watch and wait for the Lord's coming. Peter paints a picture of what the times will look like in the last days. People will be indulging in their own interests and desires and not being concerned when life on earth, as we know it, will come to an end. He describes a people who will not just reject the idea of Jesus, but 
will scoff and refuse to accept it. He describes their reaction to be equiv equivalent to a modern day meh. They essentially say, stop your noise. You've been hollering and telling us that Jesus is coming back for years now. When, it's, when is his projected arrival now? Our grandparents used to tell us this, and he's still not here. You're wasting our time. Do you hear the nonchalantness about the warning that they have been given? Do you hear how flippant they are about this warning? They've heard time and time again, Jesus is coming soon. But they're so caught up in their own plans and their own desires that they don't have any interest in end time prophecy. But Peter reminds God's people that this is the same foolish talk that was rampant when Noah was living. And the same God who created all things created the waters that overtook the earth and made everything and was destroyed in its path. Likewise, the second coming of Christ will be a day of reckoning, and the world as we know it will be destroyed, not by water, but by fire. Therefore, instead of meeting the same fate as those who choose to ignore the warning signs, what are we to do as believers, and how should we be living? Peter makes it very clear in verse 11. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you to be? You ought to live holy and godly lives. As believers, we are supposed to be different. Somewhere along the way, we have adopted the idea that in order to win unbelievers over to Christ, we have to make ourselves blend in and be unassuming, but so afraid to stand out and be different. Some of us have no problem walking under the guise of a good person, but become shrinking violence when our faith is put to the test. That should not be. 1 Peter 2, verse 9 says, But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light. The word peculiar means to be odd, unusual, strange even, to those around us, because we are chosen by God to be a light in this very dark word. I'm reminded of Daniel and the Hebrew boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who took a stand in their day that no matter what direction society was going, no matter how the culture tried to oppress them. They were willing to say, I will stand with the Lord, and no matter what, I, no, and no matter what I choose to be countercultural and obey whatever Jesus commands me to do. Are we prepared to be a people who are countercultural? Are we prepared to take a stand when everything is down? Are we willing to say no to the things of this world and say yes to whatever Jesus commands of us. And yes, I know it's difficult. And yes, I know that it's hard. I find it difficult every day. I'm no different from any one of you. But still God calls us to take a stand and to be different. People shouldn't be taking guesses as whether we are believers or not. They should be able to look at us and be like, there's something different about this person, and I want to know why. So, I pray that we all make the decision to stand firm and that we will wait firmly for whenever God comes, we will have the assurance of knowing that we are living a holy and godly life. Finally, it's a perfect time to get right with God. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow to keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. 
Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Jesus will return, and when he returns, he will come with power and great glory. And when he comes, everyone will witness a triumphant return, and oh, what a day that will be. But don't be mistaken. Yes, it's been over 2,000 years since the crucifixion, but the Lord is not short on his promise. For those of us who have made Jesus Lord of our life, it will be a day that we have been longing and hoping for. But for others, this day will be a day of sorrow, for the time will have closed on the opportunity to make our lives right with him. Jesus died on the cross for our sin and paid the ultimate sacrifice. He now offers the gift of salvation to everyone if you're willing to accept him as the only means of reconciliation with God. If you haven't made that decision yet, this is the perfect time to make things right and have the blessed assurance of salvation through Jesus Christ. Will you make him Lord of your life today? As we close this song, I close this sermon. Um, I hope that each and every one of us, I don't know where you are with God, and I'm not going to assume, but I'm hoping and praying that if this message for you today, that you won't wait, that you will choose Jesus today. The Bible says that we have been given a perfect opportunity, a perfect opportunity called today. Tomorrow's not promised to us. And so will you make the necessary things that you need to do in order to get right with God? We're going to close um, with a response song. We're going to sing, I Surrender All. And I'm just going to invite you to, to stand as we uh, make this declaration and as we sing together that, that you would choose to surrender. And if you haven't done so, make it right with God today. Once again, Milliken Church family and friends, we thank you for worshiping with us. We pray that you have been blessed 
by the message Pastor Aza has shared. Now, before Pastor Aza to come forward to give us a benediction, I'd like to do a little reminder that please, at the end of the service, do not congregate inside the building and exit as soon as possible so that our volunteer will be able to quickly clean the building so that it will be safe for the next congregation to come later in the afternoon. And now, Pastor Aza. And now receive the benediction. May the grace of our Lord, the fellowship of Jesus Christ, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Amen. You are dismissed. Sing it. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at God bless you. You are dismissed.